All right, hi everybody. Um, welcome back, or welcome if it's, if it's your first time. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you around one of my worm tubs, worm bins of my worm farm. Uh, this is just a nice simple storage tub. Uh, 35 litre underbed storage tub. Uh, we got some holes drilled in the lid, nice and simple. Uh, nice top layer of cardboard, keep them safe. Get this all out of the way. Now we're getting into the meat of it. Alright, so typically I give it a nice fluffing up, which a lot of people suggest isn't necessary. But in this system, what I'm trying to do is every time I visit the worm bin, I'll be shifting this material just down slightly, uh, kind of creating a miniature flow through uh, or a miniature wedge system. So you see, this bottom end is a lot less active because it's already all processed mostly already worm castings not many worms but the further up we get the more active we should see this tub because we're now getting up to the working area of the feeding zone where we'll see a lot more of the activity going on some of the last feeds slower food still here I like to use a few bits of uh, wood at this end as well, just to keep some inoculation points going on for the worms, so the bacteria starts breaking down the material nice and quick. As you can see, these guys have got through the vast majority of what's been in here. A few bits of uh, turkey tail mushroom, always seem to take a while to break down. And then this week, uh, we got some mango, Carrot, potato, a few bits of apple. And these are just going in. Nice fine layer of the old material. A bit of a sprinkling. A bit of this, a bit of that. So at this point, because this bin is very well established, I like to give them between a week and 10 days worth of material to work. Or in my head, that long. I'll be checking in on them in about three days and to be quite honest they'll usually get through what I've given them. <laughs> so typically you, I could be feeding every three days. Um, I aim to do it every seven at a minimum but you know life comes in the way things happen and don't hold it against yourself the worms will survive. So I'm gonna add back some of this brown material to start covering this stuff. Again, typically it would be about a one to one or two to one ratio with browns to, to your food waste. But these are just processing my house waste bins. So I'm not looking for peak production. I'm just looking for them to eat my waste. So none of it's going to landfill. At which point we got a nice layer and then we're gonna just cover it back up. Again, just making sure all the nice tasty stuff that any fungus gnats or things like that might be attracted to, get them covered with a nice layer of worm castings. And that is that bin pretty much sorted. Then I like to replace these cards, help hold the moisture in and also gives the worms another option of some brown materials. If I'm a bit slow on feeding them, it means they got something there to nibble on. But that is very simply how we run through uh, these worm tubs. This is how the material moves from end to end. As you see, this stuff, I can now move this bit of card up here and allow this end to start drying, which means it's a lot easier to sift the material afterwards. And I've almost always got, say, 
a leader or two in this end of worm castings available if I need to top dress or if I want to make up a, a compost tea with worm castings it's all there ready and waiting always shifting it down so the feeding zone is kept this end the worms are always shifting their way down and keeps it nice and simple nice and tidy minimal sifting needed because all your worms should be migrating and that's how I run it. Let me know your thoughts and possible improvements down in the comments, which should be that way. <laughs>